the uh, the last time we have been talking about the moorings, coastal and open ocean examples, and uh, and this is how it looks like. There are different kind of uh, of uh, techniques of uh, of uh, doing the moorings, and I won't go into details because these are technical details how to uh, how to put the mooring and uh, there there should be a surface marker which you know to avoid the incidents with the with the, with the mooring although there are there are surface markers there are quite often situations where the, the mooring has been lost we have a mooring for example right now in a southern Adriatic which is there functioning for about five six years and uh, a few days ago, we had a communication that mooring has is drifting, so that means it's not anchored anymore. So somebody cut this thing here, and so it was drifting. So uh, we have to go there and pick up whatever is left. Yeah. Anyhow, these are different techniques, and uh, here is the uh, the atmospheric part, which is uh, always obvious at the surface, and. Uh, if we are talking, if we are working on a relatively shallow depth, we don't need the uh, the uh, we we can uh, recover all this thing, including anchors. Uh, but this is only all technical details. I don't want to to go into this thing here. And this is how this uh, how this mooring looks like, which has also rain gauge, optical rain gauge, and then various other things. There are CDDs at the surface, typically. CDD is conductivity temperature depth sensor, and this is typically has the uh, the, the the real time transmission. As I as you remember, we were mentioning about the uh, the the, uh, the 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 mooring network which is operating in uh, in the equatorial area, which is this. Uh, uh, associated to the prediction of the El Nino, which has been put along the equator, which has about 70, 70 moorings. So there are 70 moorings of this, this type here, which has been operating on a, on a long time scale. There are also another mooring networks, which are, for example, in the, in the Atlantic is uh, what is called Pirata, is the, the mooring, which is along the, uh, the equator again, because the equatorial area is important for, uh, for prediction of formation of the, of the uh, uh, uragan, or, uh, and it's important also for the prediction of the circulation in general along, along the equator. And, so, and then there is another, uh, and also that one has around, uh, around uh, 50, 50 moorings in the equator, along the equator in the Atlantic Ocean. There is also another uh, mooring network in, uh, in the Indian, always along the, the equator, because these areas are considered, uh, are considered the key areas for the functioning of the, of the World Ocean. Uh, uh, talking about the, uh, the the continuous observations about the about uh, the uh, the ocean areas, in uh, uh, right after the World War II or during the World War II, there was a series of meteorological ships. So the ships were more or less uh, covering a certain point, a certain uh, uh, coordinate system, certain coordinate uh, area, certain area of the coordinates. So there was around uh, 20 meteorological ships in the Atlantic, in the in the Pacific. They are they have been used to to uh, to make the weather prediction better, because the you know the the, the meteorological observations obviously are not uh, were not possible over the over the ocean. Now they are it's possible because there is a there is a mooring. Uh, system there is a real-time transmission but at that time there was uh, there was oceanographic ships who were which were there and uh, right it was like between 15 and 20 ships obviously 
supported by different nations. It is an international program. And right now there are only two of them left. One is in the Atlantic and the other one in the Pacific. And they were mainly for the oceanographic, well, for the meteorological measurements. Uh, yeah. And uh, so this is, this is how the, the obs observations over the ocean evolved. And uh, so uh, this, uh, this having the ship over the ocean to do continuous of meteorological observations costs a lot because you have to have a permanent uh, meteorological uh, personnel. You have to have the ship which is maintained that they are not small ships, they are big ships. And one day of uh, <clears throat> one ship, one day of ship time costs like 50, between 20 and 50 thousand euros or dollars. So uh, you, can, you can do your calculation and find out how expensive was uh, maintaining these uh, these continuous observations for uh, over the over the world ocean. Certainly, <clears throat> not 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 this thing is not cheap at all. You know because the there are a number of instruments. Each instrument costs between uh, twenty to fifty thousand euros. If you if you that, that if you have a ten instruments, you have a, like a half a million of, of, of euro of instrumentation. At least you have some some uh, hope that you will recover this. Some hope, not all, not hundred percent, because there are fishing activities very 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 mm, dangerous for this kind of structures. Uh, we have done. Uh, we have done a number of, uh, of uh, mooring measurements, and we still have them, and along the Italian coast. And since there, the fishing activity is very strong. We put we we used to put the instrument, the instrument mooring into the sea. Right after two three days, it disappeared. So we we had to change the uh, the. Uh, our uh, strategy, because it was not possible to do it by fixed instrument. You will see later how how did we do it. Um, okay, so these are moorings, and here is, for example, a mooring in the Gulf of Trieste, which is here. You can you recognize this thing here? You know what is this? Castello di Miramare, and then this is the mooring which is which has been put in front of that because here is the uh, here is the special uh, protected area, marine protected area, and at the limit of this marine protected area there is a continuous uh, measurements. You can see the solar solar cells, and below there is a, there are a number of instruments. You will see later which one, and here is the uh, the animal anemometer. And so it, it has the real-time data transmission into the at the, the coastal in the coastal area. Here is how it looks like below, and it has a three-point uh, three-point uh, mooring, three-point anchoring, and here is here is the ADCP uh, acoustic Doppler current profiler which gives the profile, vertical profile of the velocity, of the horizontal velocity from zero. The, here is the depth is only uh, 20 meters, so it's, uh, it's a, uh, relatively simple from the ingenieristic point of view to keep it functioning, or no, at least to keep it there. And uh, here is how it looks like. And uh, what uh, what parameter me me parameters measured? So wind speed and direction, temperature, atmospheric pressure in the sea measures temperature, salinity, pH, dissolved oxygen, chlorophyll, turbidity, and speed in direction of currents. This is, these are the, all the parameters measured. And it's, here is a very interesting uh, uh, solution for for getting the the vertical the, the vertical profile of. Uh, of temperature, salinity, pH, dissolved oxygen, chlorophyll, and turbidity, is uh, having. There is a winch here, which, which uh, have this uh, this multiple multi-parameter sensor, which goes up and down every three hours. So it gets every three hours the vertical profile of all these parameters, and. Uh, 
So uh, this is how, it, I don't want to enter into these details about the uh, technical details which are, which are uh, not, not relevant in this very moment for us at least. And uh, this, uh, this is the weight which keeps this, this thing vertical, otherwise without this it will, it will, it will be, can fall down. Um, this is the uh, this is how the the the, the, uh, the uh, how the transmission is the example of course the Murray transmission of data in real time uh, uh, and you can see this what are these parameters which are, which are given velocity of the wind direction velocity maximum velocity and so forth temperature of the air humidity, pressure, temperature of the sea, salinity and so forth, and the time. For example, this is a specific uh, specific example of this. And this is the graph which shows the, the time depth evolution of different parameters. This is, for example, here is the wind direction these are the uh, the water temperature as a function of depth. This is the depth from zero to say, 18 meters, and here is the uh, here is the dates, and you can see how the temperature was, how you are able to get this uh, resolution, the, the vertical evolution, the evolution of the temperature in both time and space, and here is the density equivalent density to this thing. This is the uh, this is temperature salinity and density. You can see how density reflects what is happening in in the in the uh, in, uh, in the temperature and salinity. And you can also see how there are some uh, some events of the vertical mixing. You can see this here. Here there is a thermocline, and for some reason, then you can study from from the wind why these vertical mixing occurs. So you have these vertical, the vertical distributions in such a way that there is a both thermocline and picnocline and a halocline present, and then you have a thermocline, a picnocline, and then you have the vertical mixing, which is due probably to the wind event. But this can be studied by looking at the time series of the wind. So this is how we uh, we can study the evolution and what is determining the different the changes of the, of the pattern of the structure of the vertical structure of the of the density of the uh, stratification of the water column there is a there is a, this is what i was telling you this is the uh, open ocean mooring array pirata in the tropical atlantic ocean this is the this is called the atlas uh, Atlas uh, buoy, and uh, and you can see what it has. It has a subsurface sensor again, temperature, salinity, and, and pressure. There is a uh, sea surface temperature conductivity sensor at one meter depth. Then there is a conductive conducting cable which brings the data into the surface, and then the data are transmitted in real time. And here is the transmitter of data. There, there are antenna, satellite antenna, which sends the, the, the data to satellite, and then sat from satellite the, the data enter into the uh, computing center. Uh, the uh, typically these uh, these buoys have been maintained once a year. So once a year the ship come there and uh, uh, changes, looks for the falling and all this all this stuff. And uh, so this is, as I told you, these are like f about between 40 and 50 of these kind of uh, this kind of buoys put into the Atlantic Ocean. And a similar thing is uh, is in the now here are the uh, here are the, uh, the the pirata in the tropical in the tropical Atlantic. These are these are some uh, in a certain f in one phase. How many buoys were later on? They were much more, and uh, 
these are the, 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 the positions. ADCP is, for example, here. And uh, this, so then you have the, the, uh, the temperature and wind data, and you have a dynamic height calculation. This is the temperature from zero to 300 meters. Here you can see quite nicely the presence of the permanent thermocline. See? And uh, in January, the, this permanent thermocline is quite close to the surface. And, uh, and you can see that below 300 meters, more or less, there are no, uh, no, uh, no important changes, at least in this thing here. The uh, interest in this kind of uh, project is uh, mainly in the surface, in the surface layer, because there is the, uh, if we are looking at the tornado formation here, then we have to know the, the sea surface mainly. The sea surface temperature is the one which determines the, the response of the lower part of the atmosphere to the formation of, of uh, uh, tropical cyclones. The, uh, now, we have to, to, to we would like to pass, not, uh, I don't go into too many, too many details to this thing here, but anyhow, you, you should know that there are towed vehicles which are used from research vessels. So you, you, you tow these, uh, these, these, these guys behind the ship and it goes uh, up and down and then measure the, the various parameters. You simply add to this kind of type of airplane, you can see the, you put the different uh, sensors, you can put the temperature, salinity and so forth, and then you are uh, you are uh, doing your measurements on the way on the way on the ship's move so it, the ship doesn't have to stop do the measurements but it has a continuous measurements which is extremely which is extremely important from uh, from the point of view of the different uh, less scale of the processes in the ocean <laughs> because if you have the uh, uh, once when there was only uh, fixed stations, one ship could were, was able to uh, to do a certain number of stops, not not very high resolution. So uh, uh, we know that, however, we know that the, in the ocean there are whole spectrum, wave spectrum of the phenomena in the ocean, starting from a few kilometers to few thousands of kilometers. And if you want to resolve the, uh, the, uh, the high frequency, the high wave number uh, phenomena, then we have to have the very high uh, uh, resolution. Obviously, with a ship which has uh, only fixed points and has a limited time to stay at, at, at the sea. Oh, good. Better ever than never. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so you have a limited, limited uh, available time and, uh, um, and the, the, the resolution is very, is very limited. However, if you have these continuous measurements, then you have your, uh, uh, as high resolution as you want. You don't have any limit of the spatial resolution. The, the problem is eventually, possibly, in a uh, temporal uh, scale, because the ship has its speed of typically of, uh, of uh, 10 to 20 knots. And 10 to 20 knots, that means that, that the, cover the coverage of larger area has, is not synoptic, is not at the same time. So you have to deal with this kind of problem in a certain, in some way. But if you help, if you, if you have the, uh, the, the at the same time the satellite measurements, for example, and you are able also to interpret whatever are you obtaining from these in situ measurements. Uh, the, it says here the typical flight path for this vehicle covers a depth range of about 250 to 500 meters, so it's it's also pretty good vertical resolution because it goes uh, can go up and down. You know, so you have the up and down uh, uh, thing, and uh, the vehicle is towed about six to ten knots. So it's uh, it's a pretty pretty high velocity, 
and every five minutes it's uh, uh, five uh, it goes up and down in 250 50 meter uh, depth and then this you know uh, so with this we are able to obtain the horizontal resolution of, of about one kilometer which is extremely extremely for oceanographic from the oceanographic point of view it's extremely high resolution uh, we have uh, in the ocean, as I told you, we have uh, uh, on the order of thousands of kilometers, which are which are the large-scale oceanic circulation. We have mesoscale circulation, which is on the order of 100 kilometers. But then we have a sub-mesoscale, sub-mesoscale processes, which are on the order of a kilometer or 10 kilometer. This is sub. Mesoscale. This is some mesoscale. This is mesoscale. Okay. So if you want to have the some mesoscale resolution, then you have to use this uh, this this kind of uh, of instruments, which guarantees you the horizontal resolution of one kilometer. <coughs> the uh, these are order of magnitude, but you, the, uh, it depends also whether you are in an open ocean or whether you are in semi-enclosed seas like in the Adriatic Mediterranean, which, where these scales are a little bit smaller than what it says here. Because in the Mediterranean, you, can have, you cannot have the circulation on the order of 1,000 kilometers as a basin wide. Is it basin wide? But 100 kilometers mesoscale is too, too large. For, for the Mediterranean or 10 kilometer sub mesoscale. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the late, late last year we have done the, uh, the experiments in a rotating table, a rotating uh, um, tank which is situated in Grenoble. In Grenoble, at the University of Grenoble, there is a rotating table which simulates the rotating girth, which is about 13 meter uh, diameter and rotates at a, at a, at a uh, speed you, you decide which one. We have used, for example, 120 seconds is uh, equivalent to one day. If you say. And there you are, you are able to see all these, uh, these structures which we are talking about. You know, we, can, we were able to see the, uh, the, sub, the mesoscale structure which, uh, which is equivalent in the real ocean about 100 kilometers in this uh, rotating tank the uh, the mesoscale uh, eddies or mesoscale structures are on the order of a, of a meter and uh, but we know what uh, we know that what is the physics behind these mesoscale because mesoscale are not only defined on the basis of the of the of the landscape defined also on the basis of the processes which are which are determining it. We know that large scale is determined by geostrophy and, and quasi-stationary quasi study and mesoscale are, uh, are, uh, are quasi-geostrophic while the sub-mesoscale has non-linear processes. So you can recognize these, these things only not only on the basis of the scale but also on the basis of the processes which are, which are determining it. Okay, so these are town vehicles. And now we are coming to, uh, to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, pr uh, the previous measurements were based on our decision where we want to go. And these are, these are uh, uh, both moorings and tower vehicles are we are determining where to put and what to what to measure. Another thing are the float and drifters, which makes part of the they also make part of the autonomous systems, but there you do the Lagrangian measurement. Lagrangian measurements means that they are the that the the measurements has been done along the path of the flow. The flow determines this. And so along the, the current, 
you, in that case, you can measure both the velocity, the current speed, and the direction. But you can do the measurements also on various oceanographic parameters, not only oceanographic, but also meteorological. If you think of, uh, of a drifter, which is this kind of stuff here, you can put there the, the pressure, uh, pressure sensor and do the measurements of the, of the atmospheric pressure. You can put here also the, the temperature sensor, atmospheric temperature sensor, but the air temperature could be measured along the pathway of, of, the, of the flow. So a whole series of measurements can be done, but this time following the flow, following the, the current. And these are the these are the uh, the these are the, the, the flows and drifters and they move freely with the ocean currents. What is the main problem with this? Uh, uh, so, uh, and they, they, their position has been, de has been determined from, uh, from one moment to another from satellite. So they have they send the, the, uh, their, uh, their position to satellite and then you can follow only s every single float or every single drifter position uh, uh, looking at the, at the evolution of their, their position. Uh, until a the decade ago, these uh, platforms were mainly used in the remote regions of the Southern Ocean, in central parts of the large ocean bases, that are really rich by research vessels and where it is difficult to expensive to deploy mooring. In, uh, this is not the only problem. The, the problem is also the, the possibility <coughs> to reach certain areas also due to the political reasons, if you have the area where there is a, there is a war, <coughs> you cannot reach with the ocean liner ships. But using these guys, you, they, they can go freely. They go and nobody nobody can stop them. They, they have now become the backbone of a new observing system which covers the entire ocean. So there is a special world oceanographic program which is using a huge number of drifters and floats in order to have a rather relatively even coverage of, of the world ocean and having the long-term observation network, which is not only limited to moorings to ships, but also to the to these guys here. So we have uh, surface drifters, which have a float at the surface and can therefore transmit data via satellite. If they are designed to collect information about the ocean surface, they carry meteorological instruments, as I told you before, on top of the float and, temp and, and uh, they can also occasionally salinity and, uh, and, uh, and a temperature sensor. And here is this, this is the very, very important thing. To prevent them from being blown out of the area of interest by strong winds, they are fitted with a sea anchor at some depth. If they are designed to give information on subsurface ocean property, additional sensors are placed between the, sur be between the surface float and the sea anchor. The depth range of surface drifter is usually limited to less than 100 meters. So they have their part which is outside of the sea has to be very, very limited in order to avoid the influence of the wind drift. They, the, 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 and, uh, and then there are float for, uh, for subsurface drifters are designed to be neutrally buoyant at the selected depth. These drifters have been used to follow ocean currents at various depths. So you can put them in a, in a way that they have a buoyancy, that they are kept at a certain depth. That you, you, know, you decide, I, I want them to stay at the, at, the density with, at the density of certain density, and then they go down at the depth where they find the density which, uh, of the ambient ambient density where they are in equilibrium, they simply follow that. So, oh, so they are following the isopycnal surfaces. And, uh, and then they, uh, they, they remain at depth for a period of time, then come to the surface briefly to transmit the data via satellite to the center, to the data collecting center, and then go return back to the to the area to the to the chosen 
density or chosen depth. <laughs> so they, they, these flows can therefore be programmed at any depth and can also obtain temperature salinity data during their assessment. What is happening is that they, they, they are staying at a certain depth. They follow the, the currents and they are programmed that every, for example, three days go up. While they are going up, they are doing the measurements of temperature, salinity, and whatever. They are reaching the surface. From the surface, they send the, the information on, the, uh, on their position and all the oceanographic parameter, parameters they measure. And so from that, you can, you can determine how big path, how big, uh, uh, yes, how big path between two different exits of these flows uh, and they pass. So they can determine, you, you can determine the, the, the velocity at a certain depth on one hand, and on, on the other hand, and every point where they uh, surface, they, uh, you know the vertical, vertical uh, profile of temperature, salinity, and whatever you want. And there are the most comprehensive array of such flows known as Argo, began in the year 2000. So this is a rather recent program, World Oceanographic Program, we started only in the year 2000. And, uh, and you can see that these Argo flows measure the temperature and salinity of the upper 2,000 meters. Uh, now, quite recently, they, uh, they have, uh, they have uh, constructed flows which goes down to 3,000 meters. Which is uh, quite a quite a good uh, quite a good um, a, uh, quite a good characteristic quite a good property for a large part of the of the world ocean, especially for the relatively uh, shallow parts like Mediterranean or where. Uh, there is another. Uh, so you can see when the Argo program is fully operational, it will have uh, three thousand floats around the world ocean. The question, there are a few questions about that. The, uh, what, what happens when the float for some reason dies? When there is no batteries or whatever? It, it, it is, theoretically, it, is, it gets lost because there is no way to recover it, no way to obtain its position. So these 3,000 floats are, uh, are uh, uh, they, their life typically is on the order of a few years. So they go on doing the, these measurements for, for, uh, for a year or two, uh, even more. And uh, the, the idea is to keep this number of 3,000 flows in the world ocean at any time for, for, the, for, for, for the years to come. So these are quite a nice uh, observational uh, uh, observational uh, studies. This is this is one flow. How it looks like when it's at sea. You know, these are the uh, these are this is the satellite antenna. These are the uh, the oceanographic uh, eventual ocean possibly oceanographic measurements. And here below that, and here is also the, uh, the and here then when it goes up and down, he it, it measures the. The oceanographic study, the oceanographic parameters. These are only drifters, so they, they stay at the surface. This one, this guy, he goes back, back up and down and do the measurements. Very, very nice. <coughs> A clever idea is <coughs> how make of these floats the uh, the, uh, the, the 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 mooring. Mooring in a sense that mooring it stays at the, at the same place. If you if you have a depth of a thousand meters and you you put the float which goes down to two thousand meters, what will it will do? It will go to it is programmed to go to two thousand meters. It will reach two thousand meter depth and it will stay on the on the bottom. It won't won't move anymore with currents. So it will do vertical profiles every three to five days at the same place, or almost at the same place, because by on its way to the surface, it is moved by the current, but more or less, it won't move too much. And that, this is a very, very nice and clever idea how to do these, uh, 
these uh, uh, measurements at a more or less at a fixed point using this kind of uh, using Lagrangian measurements. So you do really Eulerian measurements by using the Lagrangian Lagrangian instrument. We have uh, we have had few of these these guys here in the Adriatic, and they they are, they are doing a pretty well their job. And uh, okay. How do they manage to take these uh, measurements, the like moorings and those vehicles, uh, in the Arctic seas and Antarctic seas, where there is ice, seasonal ice oh. cover or icebergs? Yeah, well, in that case, they, they don't really the surface, but uh, the, they, if, it's, if it's ice, continuous ice, they are lost. If there is a um, like seasonal ice cover, if it's seasonal, then it will, uh, after some time, it will, uh, it will uh, reach the surface and then it will send the data, but not all the time. Uh, and okay, so uh, let's go ahead. These are the surface drifters. So we have the the surface drifters are these these things here. It has uh, it has four four um, sails, and this this keeps them at the surface. You can see how when you put them into the sea, it is it looks like this one. These are the series of drifters which are which are uh, ready to be to be uh, deployed. At the sea, at the, in the sh on the ship, and um, yeah, that's uh, that's how it, they look like. You know, once <laughs> a long time ago in the uh, '60s, what the people were using is the the, the bottles, the bottles, simple bottles, beer bottle or whatever. They put there the the postcard. And they they deploy them from the ship, from the oceanographic ship, and then uh, obviously having the, the exact information on the position where they were deployed, and then there is a request, whoever find them to send the, the postcard with the exact position of the finding to to certain address, to oceanographic institute. So you you were able they were able to connect the point where it was deployed. And the last and the and the arrival point. So there was more or less. The, there was in first approximation, the uh, there was the linear uh, trajectory from the where they they were deployed to the to the their arrival, which is a kind of information which was which was uh, at that time rather rather good information. So there was a quite a number of. Uh, drifting bottles, which has been used in the, in the old times to measure the surface the surface currents. These are the these are another type of uh, of drifters with these socks, which can be uh, five meter long. So they they do kind of a integral of the five meter flow, for surface five meter flow, and then always they always have the surface. Uh, the surface float, they can have the oceanographic, the meteorological measurements, atmospheric pressure, temperature, and salinity. So they have these, these, uh, these uh, sensors. Barometer is there, you can see. Irradiance meter, they can do also the measurements of the irradiance and so forth. And this is the holly sock drug, which is here is a 15 meter long, so it can be. It can be a different, all different uh, uh, length, and uh, so these are all different kind of uh, of solutions. How to? They are they are relatively low cost, but they are they are characteristics that they cost relatively little. They cost from one to five thousand euros, and they are expendable. This is a little bit of problem, at least from my point of view, because you know you, you keep. But it took throwing the, the stuff into the sea and 
and this is something which, and then is the tracking and data telemetry, Zargo, GPS, Iridium, or GSM. The data, what they collect are near surface current 0, 15, 50 meters, for example, from successive positions. They have the measure SSTC surface temperature, temperature as a, as a uh, function of depth, C surface salinity, then they have uh, optical parameters, air temperature and atmospheric pressure, wind speed and direction, and their their characteristics is near real-time data processing and dissemination. Sampling period is 0.5 to 2 hours. So every half an hour, every 2 hours, they, they can collect the data and then send the data via uh, one of these, uh, one of these uh, uh, telemetric systems, send the data to data collection center. This is, these are their characters, yes? What was the LU and the ET? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> some, some, uh, some, uh, uh, optical parameters. I check. I check, but you know, it's a, a well, optical parameters mean or, or transparency or the turbidity, so that means uh, the, 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 how the transparent is the, the sea, so these, these kind of parameters. But exactly this one, I, I must say, I don't know. The one, again, one, one interesting thing is that uh, times ago, the, uh, the measurements of, of some optical parameters between those are uh, transparent, transparency, was used to be the so-called Seki disk. Seki disk me measurements, I don't know whether you have heard this. Hey, Seki disk. This is a white disk of the 30 centimeter in, uh, radius, which has been uh, put down and when the the second is disappear from your, the the guy who is looking at it, when it disappears, this is the this is called the second is depth. So this gives you the idea on the transparency of that on a white on a white body. And so this is the the, the transparency measurements at a, once upon a time they did from the from the from the anchored ships. Now, obviously, these things can be measured very, very simple from, uh, from the uh, electronic instrumentation. Here is uh, how the drifters are deployed. Very simply, you throw them into the sea. This is, this is the collie socks. And this is the simple drifter, surface drifter. But then they can be uh, deployed from research vessels. One hand, on the other hand, they can be observed or uh, uh, deployed also from volunteer observing ships. Volunteer observing ships, that means the simple commercial ships which do for you this job to deploy, to deploy these drifters and just write the position, the deployment position. So then you are after that you can follow them and uh, see do the current the current measurements. You can see that the people are very happy with this. They smile. <laughs> I don't know whether they smile because of the camera or they're happy. <laughs> and uh, this is the uh, this is how what, these are the results. These are some of the results. This is what they call the spaghetti diagram. And uh, this is in the Mediterranean. These are the, uh, the uh, under different projects, uh, the, the, the drifter tracks deployed in the, in the Mediterranean. You can see that, for example, Egito, which is this green, green uh, spaghetti, which has been deployed in this area here where the, within the project between Egypt then there is a, a Black Sea, which is over there. You can see this thing. 
or you can see the Dolce Vita, which is the project which has been uh, uh, which has been uh, undertaken in the in the Adriatic. But uh, you can see these blue colors are not only in the Adriatic, but they also go out and you end up here. That means that that something which has been deployed here can have certain chance also to reach the Libyan coast. This is this is this is something which happens obviously in not in a, in a day or in a month, but happens in a, in an order of a year, and then you can from these so that you can follow the single the single drifter and find out what is the the, the, the flow pattern during that specific specific period. There are some areas where there is a very very dense. Uh, trajectories of drifters like here along the African coast or here for example here we know the, from the from the Mediterranean oceanography we know for example here there are two eddies uh, two gyres which are Alboran gyres here and you can see really that the uh, the, the form of these this uh, this uh, density of these uh, these uh, eddy, these uh, drifters uh, uh, describe this this gyre, these gyres presenting there. Also, another thing is that we know that there is an inflow in the surface. These are drifters, so that means they they reflect whatever is happening on the surface. We know that the the Atlantic water enters the Mediterranean, but enters in the surface layer because we know that the salinity and density of the Mediterranean waters are higher than those of the Atlantic. So if there is any change exchange, and there is an exchange of about million meter cubic per second between the Adriatic, between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic, in the surface layer, the Atlantic water enters the, uh, the, the Mediterranean. But at the depth, at depth, the Mediterranean water exits, as we have seen in previous lectures, exits into the into the uh, Atlantic, and uh, what you can see that there are quite a high density of drifter path along the North African coast, and this is because the uh, the, the the inflow of the Atlantic water due to the Coriolis force is kept along the the North African coast, and this reflects really the density of trajectories of drifters which then follows this North African coast and goes goes eastward. The uh, for example if you look at this yellow yellow um, yellow uh, trajectories which are in the in the Adriatic you can see that they they describe the the, 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 the eddy the, the gyre, they describe the South Adriatic gyre because you can see that there, in the center there is no this yellow trajectory. So you can get quite a lot of information from looking simply at this spaghetti diagram. Obviously only qualitative, quantitative yeah, information has to be, should be obtained by doing the calculations of, of the speed and, and, uh, and direction. And this is a very long, uh, this is pretty uh, long process where you have to do certain number of corrections and do for each each square the calculation of speed, then you, uh, of velocity. And then obviously you have to decide when, how to do these uh, the, the averages. You know, I decide to do the average speed in this specific square, but how do I do? I have to decide what period of time I do the, the average. Whether do I do summer, winter, or I do the 10-year uh, average, whatever. And, I would, I know, and in, the, in the function of my decision, I, I would like, I would obtain the steady flow, I would obtain geostrophic, I would obtain something else. But anyhow, and I, I can obtain also the Inertial oscillations, looking at the drifters, because they, if they come into the, uh, 
the area where there are inertial oscillations, I can obtain the inertial oscillations, not unsteady flow, no, non stationary flow. Anyhow, number of information that we obtain from here. Uh, okay. So obviously you have to know the 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 the, uh, the point where you launch your deploy your flow to the first point, your drifters, and the 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 last the last point until the guy lives. So obviously this point here in this blue blue stuff in this blue trajectory is the beginning someplace someplace here in in the Adriatic and not from here to there. So we should know some we should have some information on the, on the oceanography in order to understand that. Look at look at this thing here for example the float the the drifters that do not go directly from the Adriatic southward. Why then they don't go? Because we know that the Adriatic in the surface has the produces the fresh water. This fresh water is some is the like like in the Atlantic, like uh, in the Gibraltar. This fresh water, due to the uh, the geostrophic the, the Coriolis force, it is pressed against the right hand side coast, looking down downflow. So that means that the the the, the uh, that the drifters which goes out or the flow which goes out from the Adriatic is pressed against the western coast and goes down. Would not go eastward. You can see that there is no in eastward part of the Ionian Sea of this part you don't see any blue trajectory. Because the, from the Adriatic doesn't go out uh, on the eastern on the eastern side, the eastern surface. Okay, these are these are few uh, few qualitative considerations which are obtained simply looking at this spaghetti diagram, which seems very very messy. But it's uh, if you keep on uh, thinking on that, and if you try to, if you know some, if you have some knowledge on oceanography, you can take out pretty pretty uh, important information looking just at this uh, chaos. Another thing is also very, very nice is the Black Sea. You see that the Black Sea uh, has, we know that Black Sea has a cyclonic circulation, basin-wide cyclonic circulation, and indeed the, uh, the, the drifters mainly were kept along the, on the coastline, along the coastline, and then they do these large basin-wide cyclonic, cyclonic gyre. They reflect that kind of circulation in a uh, in a uh, uh, in, in in their trajectories. Yeah, uh, let me let me continue a little bit along the lines of uh, of using the uh, the the drifters and. Uh, a, uh, let's let's come back closer to to our area to the to the Adriatic. This is you can recognize this. This is the this Italy. This is Greece. This is Sicily. This is Libyan coast here. This is Egyptian Crete, and here is toward the uh, to this is the Sicily Channel here, and in the the the, um, the Gibraltar is over here, right? Uh, the Israel is over there. What uh, what shows this this thing is an average 93, 96 uh, altimetric pattern of the Ionian Sea. What what this this is the these colors are altimetric pattern, and this is out uh, absolute uh, uh, absolute sea surface measured from satellite. And what we did see is simply the average for the for the three four years, so we are quite uh, quite assured that we are a, uh, a yeah, geostrophic part of the flow. And what one can see is that there is a relatively high sea level, which protrudes the the the, the tongue of relatively high 
sea level protrudes northward in the Ionian Sea, and you can see that there is a, uh, yeah, and sorry, it's negative, and you can see that there is a, uh, no, it's positive, that it has to go, this is negative, this is the lower sea level than here. So it relatively high sea level produced northward. What is this thing here? Okay, so, and you can see that very really high sea level is here and high sea level there. This, this high sea level here is due to the rough, rather high temperature along the African coast, higher temperature uh, stretching of the, of the water column. And uh, superimposed on that, are the, uh, the, the velocity calculated from the drifters. So all these spaghetti diagrams that you have seen before have been used to calculate the average velocity for the, the same period as we have this, the, uh, the, um, the, the, the sea level. And if you look closer, you can see that, that I hope you can see it, you can see that the, 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 the um, the uh, vectors are following very nicely this structure here. So you can, you can have the flow here going, then turning northward, and then going back. So what that means? That means that the velocity is calculated from the, uh, from the drifters, which doesn't have anything to do directly with the geostrophic flow, reflects very well the sea surface pattern. Sea surface pattern is nothing else than, than the geostrophic flow because the sea surface gradient is something which gives you the direct information on the geostrophic flow. So what the, the, the and also here you can see here that there is this, this high here and you can see that there is an anticyclone here like here is anticyclone circulation over this high high sea level. So what this tells us is that the, the drifters, although they are partly influenced by, uh, by the wind, but very, very little, uh, we minimize the influence of the wind on, on drifters. And although they are quite, uh, um, quite uh, un, uh, un irregularly present in different parts, because you throw them and then where they go, you don't, you don't really know. Although this is that way, they pretty well reflect the, the geostrophic flow pattern. This is what, what this image tells us. So they are very useful, very useful uh, um, tool to do the long-term measurements. And then you can see also here from the Adriatic that there is an outflow here along this part and it goes here. And here is an inflow along the eastern part <coughs> there. <coughs> you can see the, uh, what I was telling you before, there is this North African current where the Atlantic stream enters and flows, uh, Atlantic water enters and flows along the North African current. What is here is the, uh, what you can see here is this, uh, this uh, speed and velocity calculated from this, from this, uh, from the altimetric map. So what altimetric map says that there is there are vectors here, but they are in colors. Also, there are uh, there are the, uh, the, the 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 magnitude of the flow. You can see that the, the largest flow goes this way here is practically following these this largest sea surface gradient. In, uh, in the in the Ionian, and you can see how they explain, they they describe very well one to another. This is remember this is three year average 93 96. Let's see how this uh, this uh, evolves in time. This is the next three year period. The next three year period, as compared to, to the previous one, there is no any more. Uh, there is no any more uh, uh, tongue of the uh, high uh, sea level protruding northward, but instead there is the uh, low sea level here and the 
the, uh, the, uh, the high sea level is limited to the Gulf of Sirte and flowing uh, eastward. On the other hand, westward, there is this, this uh, pattern here of the inflow of the Atlantic water remains. It's keep it's present there. Again, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the vectors are the velocities obtained from the uh, from, uh, from drifters which were present at that specific period, 97, 2005. <laughs> and uh, so you can see that in that case, the flow is this direction. Before, you remember, it was that direction. So instead of having the high, uh, the anti-cyclonic, here we have a cyclonic flow present in that, in that area. So in, in a period of another period, which is next to this previous one, what we have been looking at, becomes anti-cyclonic. So the, the entire, entire basin, the entire Ionian changes the, the flow from cyclonic to anti-cyclonic in a question of, uh, of, uh, of a year. This is a huge amount, huge mass of water because the major, the, the, the largest depth there is 5,000 meters. So can you imagine that the whole uh, water column of 5,000 meter deep changes the, the flow on this, on, this, uh, on this relatively short time scales. The, the, uh, the, on the other hand, south of this line here, the flow maintains to be uh, anti-cyclonic here because it's high, uh, high sea level. And you remember? You remember that? High sea level means the, uh, means the, Okay, this thing here. So this is reflecting the anticyclone. This is anticyclonic flow, looking at the geostrophy. And uh, what is happening here is due to this cyclone here, the flow, which is the, the Atlantic flow, continues directly into the into the eastern Mediterranean, and there is no. There is no uh, uh, meandering flow toward the north. Okay, so this is the that's the period 1997-2005. Go further. Go further, which is the uh, period uh, next period 26, 206, and to 10. Again, the situation come, come, comes back. To the, to the situation we showed, I showed you before, is again not as good uh, pronounced, but also present here is this uh, is this uh, uh, high sea level high, which makes the flow again anticyclonic. So the meander of the Atlantic water do, do goes that way and then comes back. The, the anticyclonic stays there all the time. And uh, you can see here that there is a nicely, a nicely present this, uh, this anticyclonic flow over here. There are a number of, uh, there are a number of, uh, of gyres which are present there, which are the mesoscale. This is the mesoscale gyre here, you see? because it has a dimension on the order of uh, 100, 100 kilometers. But the basin-wide structure is that this time, again, anticyclonic. Again, there is uh, coming back to what was happening between 90, with until 97. And uh, here again, you can see all the time present this, this huge anticyclone, uh, which is due simply to to the fact that there is a uh, relatively high temperature. We can go ahead a little bit just to to close the uh, to close the, uh, the, the, the the series. Again we have this low sea level low here. The uh, the, uh, the 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 Atlantic water continues directly there and the sea level low shows the, the cyclonic circulation around this, this low. So there is this kind of a, 
of uh, tilting of, uh, of oscillations of the sea level on a decadal scale, which I, I might be able or might, I might have time to, to show you, to tell you what is the reason for that. But this is just to illustrate to you how the, uh, how the use of, uh, of uh, drifters can be, uh, can be uh, how drifters can be useful tool to describe both temporal and spatial evolution of the, of the flow. Okay? Yes? Are these uh, changes also in the development of uh, circle boundary currents related to the bacteria too? Mm -hmm. Because they, maybe they try to follow the, the isobats. Yeah, they, they in general they do follow isobats, but there should be some other force which determines the which determines the changes from from the cyclonic to anticyclonic. So there should be additional force which I might be able to have ten minutes to explain to you how how this how this happens. In my in the last the last hour I might uh, go and try to explain to you what has what is our idea why this appears because this. This pattern, this changes on a decadal scale, has been has been um, uh, <coughs> observed thanks to 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 ultimately thanks to satellite data. But but people were using uh, the satellite data, and then they, they found out that there are this not always. Although we are quasi steady uh, flow, the, the quasi steady flow indeed changes on a, on a decadal scale. So the, the, we have some idea what is the reason for that. And uh, you can find out relatively simple going into the vorticity, potential vorticity equation and find out what might be the possible mechanism which changes this from cyclonic to anticyclonic. Anyhow, so I will, uh, I will try to show you. Certainly what you said is the, uh, that the, the, the flow has try to follow the isob isobats is really indeed this is true for example if you look at the at the north african uh, current it really follows the isobats it follows the isobats also here even this this uh, this uh, mesoscale structure there follows the isobats because if you look at the bathymetry there you will see that there is a deep here more or less circular deep and the uh, and above this deep the the, the, the flow the gyre is uh, is trapped along this this deep area okay yeah uh, this is just uh, another another <coughs> illustration that not only the uh, the altimetry data but also the um, the uh, surface salinity patterns um, describes or gives the uh, the confirmation of this flow of this type of flow. The uh, this is uh, what is has been obtained surface salinity pattern obtained from the numerical model, long term running numerical numerical model, and for the same period when we have a cyclonic anti cyclonic cyclonic and anticyclonic flow there is a there are the uh, the, uh, the the surface pattern of salinity distribution why why salinity we, why use salinity salinity is very useful because the, the we know that the atlantic water is fresher lower salinity than the mediterranean therefore wherever we find the lower salinity water it means that there is a the presence of the of the Atlantic water, and if you have the anti-cyclonic circulation, so that means this way here, you can see that the salinity of tongue, low salinity tongue, this is low salinity, goes northward because the the, the, the low salinity has been transported northward. When you have the anti-cyclonic, the the high salinity which coming from east is blocked here, for example, because of the intrusion of the low salinity water at the surface layer from the origin, 
from the Atlantic origin. In the case of the anti-cyclonic flow, the, the tongue doesn't go anymore northward, but it proceeds directly eastward, while the, uh, the high salinity then in that case goes northward and reaches even, even the, the Adriatic. So you can see that how the horizontal distribution of salinity respects, reflects is uh, the, the thing what is happening in the flow field. And then again, the anticyclonic flow here, which is weaker, weaker uh, uh, signal than here, but anyhow, there are some evidences of this thing. Or in the case of a cyclonic, again, another anticyclonic mode, you can see the you can see the 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 northward ex, uh, uh, extension of this high salinity flow of the Levantine of the Eastern Mediterranean origin. So this is you know nicely you can nicely see how the, the horizontal distribution of salinity reflects the the, the flow or reflects the, the, the transport the, the, the advection of salinity in, uh, in this specific case. This kind of reasoning can be applied to to number of uh, to number of areas. It depends what you want to, to study, obviously. But this is just an example how we do. Yes. On the top right corner, you can see some uh, low salinity points of the but there. Excuse me. Can you say again? Uh, the top right. Uh, this one. Yeah. This one. You can see no all of them. This pressure is in all of them. There is a low salinity over there. Here, the top right. The top right. This one. No, this one. Sorry. Huh? Here. Yes. Oh, this is the GNC. The GNC, uh, GNC is connected to Black Sea. Black Sea has a low salinity. So this Black Sea, which is on this side here, this water comes here and then occupies this northern part of the Aegean. So there is a that is a <coughs> continuous outflow of the low salinity water from the Aegean Sea, of the, from the Black Sea. Okay. So, there we are. This is the status of the Global Drift Array. This is by, in a, in a uh, 2013, now, right now, is much richer, but we are talking always about 2,000, uh, 3,000 uh, drifters spread all around the world, and these are the red are these which measure only SST, the blue are measuring also sea level pressure, wind are there is no wind measurements at least there were no measurements at that time. There are salinity is green. In addition, you see, you can see that there are number of uh, of uh, drifters there, which are measuring also the uh, the, um, the salinity, and they are all distributed in a way how the real time transmission is uh, has been uh, uh, realized, and so this is how the, the the, uh, the, the world ocean has been uh, controlled of or uh, observed using the, the global drifter array. Obviously, if you do the another, another time, it is not only that you will have a new drifters, but you will have also the different position of these drifters because obviously they are moving back and forth. Uh, yes, that's... Uh, Yes. Yeah. Why make uh, an instrument to measure only SSD when there are spaces to construct and you, you could you know, put other sensors on it? Yeah, so but the, the, the SSD is... SSD, you have 494 equipment in. Yeah. And why do you make only that? But, you know, the, the, the SSD measurements are the cheapest of all. Because you just put the, the SSD the temperature sensor. The uh, to that you add you add this salinity is the, the, the most uh, the most expensive and not only the most expensive is also the 
uh, the, the degrades, the sensor degrades very, 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 very quickly because it's a conductivity measurement. And the conductivity measurements depends on the state of the sensor. You know, by by the time there is a drifting of the measurements, so you got the, uh, you lose the precision and accuracy, and then so uh, it's a pretty pretty kind of measurement. Salinity. Therefore, the SST is the, the, the most uh, the most common and most simple and uh, and very uh, very cheap. Sea level pressure is also very relatively simple. Sea level pressure measurements. Uh, sorry, no sea level. Uh, yes, um, atmospheric pressure and sea level. Okay. Then we have the. Profiling flows. Profiling flows are those which I told you before. Is that the uh, they have a satellite antenna? They have they are different. They are two different uh, different type of uh, of uh, profiling flows, which are Provor and Apex. Provor is the, the French one, French construction. Apex is American, and. Uh, and uh, what they have, uh, they have there. This is the the housing where they have the instruments. What what you choose as important. There is a CTD measurements. So that means conductivity, temperature, uh, and uh, depth. And uh, they can uh, they can go down to two thousand decibars down to. 2,000 uh, meters, and uh, what they do? Let's uh, let's go. How they how they how what they do? Okay. So when you when you deploy them, when you deploy them, they they go down by recording the, uh, uh, the they they descend or ascend by a by a velocity of six centimeters that's 10 centimeters per second so that means in six hours it does the vertical the vertical profile then you choose the cruising depth and uh, uh, cruising depth is maximum cruising depth is 2,000 meters and uh, it drifts approximately nine days at the, at the chosen depth, and uh, and in totally it takes ten days between one surfacing and the other surfacing, or so between between the data transmission exercise one and two, and uh, and this this ten day. Uh, you, you calculate for this 10 day period, you calculate the average speed, the average speed and direction. So it does kind of an uh, integral of these, uh, all of the speed and the velocity and direction over 10 days. So it's like we, it used to be the, the, the drifting bottles which has been thrown once from the ship and then after six months has been recover some some other place they what they did is simply uh, linear uh, interpolation between the, uh, the launching point and uh, the, the point where it was found it could be staying at the at the, at the coast at the beach for uh, two months nobody knows we, it's only known that it has been found at that time the same thing is here that we the, the, we know that the Starting point and the end point of this cycle at the, de the given depth, where the calculate the average speed and direction from the making the difference between the initial and and final point, and uh, on its way up, on its way up, it records the temperature and so whatever, and sends via satellite to a uh, to a uh, to um, to uh, uh, to the data collecting station, and uh, obviously at the surface, it stays. Uh, the surface stays about 
6 to 12 hours at the surface to transmit the data to the satellite, that means that also at the surface there is certain drift of the instrument at the, uh, which has to be taken into consideration when calculating the, the, the speed at the cruising depth. As I told you before, if the cruising depth is 1500 meters, so, so the guy will simply lie down at the bottom and then after, after 10 days it will go up and more or less be staying at the same position and uh, so we would have in that case the Eulerian type of measurements. No information obviously on, a, on, a, on the current, but there will be information on all other parameters. This is the, that's the, uh, that's the, the another Mediterranean profiling uh, characteristic, sampling characteristic. So what is this thing? The guy goes down to uh, 350 meter for about four days. After four days, in four, uh, five hours going to 2,000 meters, which is the, uh, which is the, the depth where it, uh, it stops and then goes up from 2,000 meters to the surface and doing the, 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 the profile. Then at the surface, six for six hours, transmits the data, then goes back to 350 meters, and then again <coughs> goes to 2,000 meters to, to do the vertical profile. This is how it works, how it works in the Mediterranean. The, uh, <coughs> Uh, typically, this is a typical decision. This is a decision which is uh, specifically <coughs> uh, related to the Mediterranean. Uh, this 350 meters was not uh, chosen by chance. It was chosen because the, at around 300 meters there is this uh, Mediterranean water, salty Mediterranean water, which goes from the Eastern Mediterranean toward the Atlantic and exits the Gibraltar. In order, therefore, in order to follow this, uh, the path of these uh, Mediterranean water within the Mediterranean, the, 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 the parking depth, the depth where it does the, the measurements of the flow or drifts with the flow is 350 meters in order to, to observe the, the, the movement of the, of the um, in order to remove, to, to observe the, the uh, the Atlantic, the Mediterranean circulation, and you can see that every five days, transmit the data to to the uh, to the center. It's they are generally expendable, so they are not recovered. They cannot be recovered. In theory, in practice, they can be recovered. Their medium, low, their their life is like the, Lifetime is like a, like lar larger than three years. Medium cost is a fifteen to twenty thousand euros. Um, uh, this is just for pressure, temperature, conductivity. If you add another parameters and uh, these things, here the, pre the the price obviously goes up. And if you can add, add also the nutrient measurements. And in that case, the, the value of it goes up to 50,000 euros. So it's, uh, it's not so cheap. But considering their life of about three, more than three years, it's, uh, it's a quite, quite an acceptable, acceptable price. Uh, so professor, if you, after three years, he dies, but you manage to in theory, yes. If it sends the the, the if the battery is working and it sends the, the information position, then you can go there and recover. Then you can change the instruments and put right. Them in you don't have to change the instruments. The, the, the instruments are in good condition. You just change the battery and then go on. So uh, it might be possible to to recover it. And quite a number of situations they they, they they have been recovered thanks to the fact that they they keep giving, uh, sending their position to the center, to the data center. So once they, they don't send any more of the, the, these parameters, then 
and then you might go and look for, for it uh, by trying to find its position and go and recover it. Obviously, considering that the one day of a ship time costs uh, 30,000 euros, <laughs> so it's a quite, a, quite a big dilemma. You know? <laughs> Do they find themselves sometimes maybe at shores of other countries and then do they have numbers? Or do you do they, have, they, have, they, they have their number. Okay. Each, each float has its own number. And the center that it belongs to? Yes. So each, each float has its, its number and you, you, you know exactly which flow is where and you can determine the position of that specific float. By chance, they find themselves at the shores of maybe I don't know Ghana. Then yes. someone finds it, he can call and then yes, yes, no, call. yes. <laughs> yes. I they will, they will pay to you. <laughs> <laughs> they will pay to you. They will pay you. Oh yes, they, uh, they there is international. Uh, there is international maritime <laughs> law. <laughs> but I think it's like I think like ten percent of the value they 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 are supposed to pay to you. So uh, you don't have to work. You just go along the beach. <laughs> yes, and make the money. But professor, if 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 it's not a battery that can lead to the collapse. Then why are they programmed by it? Because in practice, like even an undergraduate, I've run projects where you just program your battery. Like, if the battery comes this low, then come to the surface and transmit your location. It would be cheaper that way. That's right. But um, but the you know the, the batteries are the, the life the battery life for this this consumption is like larger than three years. So unless the battery are not uh, wrong or there is a problem with the battery, they they, they guarantee this this uh, lifetime. So, but every you know every now and then the battery is not in a good shape or or it uh, has some some error in the battery. So it can be can it be different type of uh, of errors. You know, these instruments are not perfect as any other man-made stuff. Okay, shall we stop? Maybe. Okay, and the Bora stopped. Do you like Bora? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay, see you the day after tomorrow. Um, I'll now make a list of your wishes, with your wish list. And, uh, yes? Sorry, I thought you said about your copy. I already sent you an email. Yeah, I already have your email. I, I received your email. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I made now. I made now the the list of the of those who have have chosen the uh, the certain theme, and um, I can I can send it to you so that you can uh, you can control what is what what theme is not sold sold out. <laughs> okay. See you around.